What's going on everybody? It's your boy Kilo Loco and today we're going to be going over when you should be using the lazy keyword in Swift. Now I'm going to try to break it down in the most um, basic form possible so that you can easily understand why you would want to use lazy and then hopefully you'll be able to go out there and start using lazy in your own projects, understand why it would be a huge benefit when you start using it. Now, before I get into that, I just got to say, make sure you head over to kiloloco.com, check it out, see if you're interested in the all access membership so that you can talk to your boy right on Slack. If you have any problems at all, just hit me up. So yeah. All right. So let's jump into the project. And as always, the project is going to be in a link in the description uh, down below. You can download it for free. Just keep in mind, this is in Swift 5. So you will need to be able to have an Xcode that can run Swift 5 if you want to compile this. But you will have access to the project. Anyway, as you can see, we're just going to be staying inside of this basic view controller. And I actually have this um, I have the simulator up showing exactly what the feature, what this app is going to do. Now, let me go ahead and run this one time so that we can see what's going on. All right, so I wanna show you exactly how fast this app is gonna open. Look at, so you see the, the beginning screen real quick and then you're gonna see the welcome screen and then we're gonna have a, a button that's not really gonna do anything. Um, you just click it and nothing really happens. And there's also this other button that says get expensive number. Now, right now, the functionality that's related to it is actually commented out. As you can see right here in um, right uh, right here in this comment, I have something called let expensive number equals awesome service dot get expensive number. And then we're setting the text to that expensive number. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at our awesome service just to see what it's doing real quick. The awesome service is simply just creating a number. I'm going from zero. I'm looping from zero to 1,500,000 um, and then I'm printing out each of these numbers in the logs, right? And then at the end of that, I'm just gonna return that number um, right here. So all this is doing is just doing a huge loop that's gonna take a while for our processor to finish and then it's gonna put it into this constant right here. Now, I just wanna show you one last time how fast the app opens when we run it. So finish building, you see the screen real quick and then it's, it shows welcome, right? Well, let's go ahead and uncomment this. And I wanna show you what happens uh, when you don't use lazy. So essentially what we're doing is as soon as we are creating this view controller, we're also getting this expensive number and setting it to this property right here. So that means that it has to go through that 1,500,000 loop before the view controller can actually get going and do the, the um, view did load and anything else. So let's go ahead and run that so that you can see how long it's actually going to take for this app to open. Now look at how long it's gonna stay on this screen. And you might've seen this in actually other apps where it takes a while for uh, the app to actually start up. You're just stuck on the launching screen, which is really bad. You don't want that, right? You don't wanna be waiting forever for your app to open before you actually get to see the functionality. So what's actually happening is, like I said, this expensive number is being calculated before anything else is actually happening, before the view did load actually runs, which we can see right here in this print statement that's saying loaded. It's down here. Let's take a look at the logs real quick. You can see that it looped through. It's going through all 100 or 1,500,000 um, loops printing out that number, and then finally when it's done, it will eventually hit the view to load. So that's really bad. We don't want that. Now, the benefit to doing something like this is that when we go ahead and uncomment this, our, our did tap uh, get expensive number button, I want to show you uh, how fast we're able to calculate that. So here comes the app. We're waiting on the launch screen for a very long time. And I'm, I'm actually going to leave this in here just because, you know, you should see how bad this can actually be if you're if you're not using lazy. So this is a problem that lazy is going to solve. It's going to make it so that we launch faster. Now, when we get the expensive number, the calculation has already been done. So we're immediately getting this label to update. Right. So let's go ahead and turn this into a lazy property. So lazy properties always have to be variables because they're actually not. They, they're actually not assigned a value until they're ready to be used. So lazy, you can think of it, lazy is like saying procrastinate. 
wait until the very last second to do something and then calculate the value. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the keyword lazy and we're going to say that it's a variable because like I said, um, all uh, lazy properties have to be variables because they won't have a, a value um, initially. So now let's go ahead and run this. I want to and I want to show you how much faster the app is actually going to launch um, compared to how it was before. So we saw the, the launch screen, but it immediately disappeared, right? And also take a look at our logs. View did load, loaded. There's no looping through all these different numbers, right? It immediately ran and we got the loaded. Now, the awesome thing about lazy is that, like I said, it's saying procrastinate until the last second to when you are actually expected to be used essentially, right? So that means if we're over here clicking some other feature, we're doing all these other things in the app, the expensive number is actually never being generated. And we can also verify that in our law or in our debug area. If we were to just say, oh, let me let me go ahead and run this one more time. We're going to need to use a breakpoint right here. And I just want to show you that expensive number is actually set to nil at this point. So if we go on this left side and if you take a look at expensive number storage, the value is actually nil at this point. So what I want to show you is we're going to go ahead and press play. We're going to continue from this break point. All right. And now what I want to do is when I hit get expensive number, what it has to do is it has to do that calculation where it loops through all 1,500,000. But notice it's, it doesn't do that until we actually are going to call this uh, functionality right here. So now when I hit the get expensive number, notice that my UI is actually freezing up. Um, the button didn't return back from that highlighted state and we still haven't updated the UI because down here in the logs, it was still going through that looping process. Now, once it finishes going through that looping process, we're eventually going to update the UI and we're going to get back that expensive number. So this is an exaggerated case of what, how lazy can benefit your app is because you can get into the app immediately, right? And, or you can load up some type of screen, some view controller or whatever. And you can use all these other features. And if none of those other features are expensive to use, which means that it takes processing power and RAM away from the rest of your app to actually calculate what needs to be calculated, then you're going to be fine. There's not going to be any lag in your app or anything like that. But as soon as you need to do uh, something that's expensive where it's using up a lot of processing power, that's when it's actually going to um, be created and at that point, if, if it's something expensive, then it's that's how long it's just going to take. I mean, there's ways to get around that, but that's a discussion for another video. So that's the main benefit of using lazy. That's exactly what it was built for. Now, there's another there's another case where you would actually want to use lazy. And um, it's mainly for, uh, I guess, a developer preference. And that's if you want to create uh, your views using lazy views. So let me go ahead and show you how that works. All right. So as you can see, we have this different structure that are this different, um, you know, uh, structuring or programming layout, I guess you could call it um, essentially this different format that you might not be used to seeing. So once again, we're going to mark this, uh, this some image view, we're just going to call it some image view, and it's of type UI image view. Now, once again, we're marking it with lazy, it has to be a variable. And we also have to specify we have to explicitly specify what type it is, because it actually won't have a value until you know, once again, it's lazy. So until it's actually about to be used. So what we have to do is we have to make sure we specify what type it is. In this case, it's a UI image view. And then we have it equaling essentially a closure, this closure right here. Now it's equaling a closure and inside this closure or a block of, of code, we're going to do whatever we want. But essentially what we need to do is we need to make sure that we're returning something of type UI image view or whatever type is right here, right? So we're going to go ahead and create an image view. And what's really awesome about this approach is that you're actually able to manipulate the image view right here um, inside of this closure. And we can, um, you know, we could 
add the image to it. We could change the background. We could do, we can mess with all the different properties that are related to this image view. And it keeps all of our code kind of concise and in, in one spot so that we want to, so if we want to change something about our image view, all of it's in, in the same block of code, all in the same spot. So what I want to do for this image view is I want to set the image. So I have this, um, I'm setting it to this UI image named KL Memoji, which I have in my assets folder, which you can see right here. And it's just going to have this little image. So now everything that's kind of associated with the image view setup is all concise and compact into one spot. Now, another thing that I will also want to do is maybe I want to say how big this image view is, give it a frame. So let's go ahead and add in a frame. So now that I actually have given our image view a frame, since we're not going to just be using um, auto layout in this particular example, uh, what I want to do is I just want to add this image view. I want to make sure that it's centered in our view. And then I also want to add it to the sub view. Now you can essentially do that here, but I usually recommend staying away from any referencing self outside of this, um, outside of our inside of the closure. You don't want to reference self inside of the closure. I mean, you can, but there's a potential for use for getting a retain cycle. And if you do really want to use self inside of the closure, what you're going to have to do is you're going to want to, um, say unowned self in a capture list like so. Um, but it's just best if you stay away from doing that because, uh, realistically you don't want to have all your layout. You kind of want your layout all in the same area. You don't want your layout to be set up in here. So let's go ahead and add that to the view. Uh, the view will appear. All right. So as you can see, we're just going to go ahead and set the center of our some image view to the center of our view. And then we're going to make sure that we add some image view to our view using the add sub views method. So let's go ahead and run that and see right now that not only is our view or not only is it our view going to be right there in the center, but it's also going to be laid out properly. And um, we have all the functionality, how, however we wanted to set it up, you know, the image, uh, the, the width and the height, all that stuff kind of set up all in one spot, which is really nice. And then once again, I still haven't got the, um, I haven't um, retrieved the expensive number yet. So I can go through, do all the other features and all this other stuff that I want it. And then I, if, if I never end up getting that expensive number, then I never have to worry about, you know, it going through that loop and freezing up my UI, you know? So I hope that makes sense. I try to explain it in the best way that I can, but if not, you know, just let me know, Hey, uh, could you explain, you know, this other thing to me? So yeah, that's pretty much lazy. It's just waiting to the last second to get up and running. It's awesome for, you know, when you're doing something expensive, you want to make sure that your views brought, uh, you know, you want to make sure that you're not doing expensive work if you're not going to be using that value. And it's also awesome for, um, making sure that all your code is, um, in one spot, if you're going to be using views and things like that. Last thing that I just didn't for, uh, mention was that you need to make sure that you call it at the end of this closure. So not only are you writing out what's supposed to happen, but you're also calling it. So you need to put the parentheses at the end of, um, at the end of the closure, but that's pretty much it. Hope you guys liked the video. Th hope that you thought it was informative. If you did make sure that you share it with as many people as you possibly can. And that's going to be all for today, guys. Thank you for your time and make sure you go out there and keep coding passionately.